Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Nexus Wraith Motorhome, we're gonna be checking out the eTrailer.com XHD tow bar. Before we kind of jump right in and get carried away uh, talking about the tow bar and how it works and things like that, I figured it'd be beneficial just to kind of refresh ourselves and touch base on the main components that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Jeep down the road in the first place. There's gonna be a total of five main parts. The first one's gonna be the base plate, and that's gonna provide us with a solid and reliable attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. Tow bar is gonna be the second component, and this is gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your vehicle to the back of the motorhome. Third main component will be safety cables, and these are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. We're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main part will be tow bar wiring, and this is gonna transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your Jeep, uh, keeping you safe and legal, you know, people around you know what's going on. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your RV, uh, helping to bring you to a more complete and predictable stop. But with that out of the way, Let's talk about the tow bar. Uh, one of my favorite things about the e-trailer tow bars is the compatibility. So this particular one comes with the Roadmaster ends, and so it's gonna work with Roadmaster base plates, but there's a lot of other adapters and, and tow bar um, packages, if you will, that allow you to pair up to, to other base plates. So if you have a, you know, a, a Blue Ox base plate or other manufacturers, chances are really good you know, a setup like this can work with them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the things that is really important to a lot of people, and it makes sense, is how well your vehicle is gonna track behind the motorhome. You know, is it gonna be responsive? Is it going to hold true whenever you're driving straight? And I feel like with this one, uh, we should have pretty good luck with it here because it's a relatively long tow bar. And generally speaking, a little more distance between your Jeep uh, or your towed vehicle and the motorhome, uh, the better. And uh, also this has two separate arms. And so these can kind of pivot and swing individually. So I feel like it might be a little more forgiving, um, especially the fact that this is a heavy duty one. So this is rated for 10,500 pounds, um, overbuilt for a lot of applications, but it's never a bad thing because if you think about it, you know, when you hit potholes and go over bumps and stuff like that, this is probably going to kind of take the abuse a little bit better and be able to kind of absorb some more of that shock. Uh, and, and that's going to make for uh, a better ride whenever you're towing behind your motorhome. This is going to be a non-binding type tow bar. And regardless, if you go with this tow bar or a different one, uh, I always suggest getting a non-binding. So it's gonna have these levers here, and if the arm gets in a bind, you can push on these, and it'll release all that tension. Because a lot of times when you're driving, these will get locked into place, and then you go to disconnect, and you might be on uneven ground or something, and you try to pull the pins out, or you, you know, and everything's super tight. It's in, a, it's in a big bind. And with a binding type tow bar, it's a big pain. You know, you gotta get a special tool or get a hammer out, and, you know, bead on it and stuff. It's it's not something you really want to mess with. So the non-binding feature that's going to save you that time, that headache. You got what you need here. Push on the lever, releases the tension, and allows you to easily disconnect uh, the way it should be. Uh, this is also going to come with a couple of things too. So you actually get your safety cables included, um, which is cool. You know, it's one less thing you don't have to worry about picking up separately. You know that they're the proper weight capacity and the proper style. Um, I will mention, uh, in our case today, we had to use some extenders here because these did fall a little bit short, but that's partly due to the fact that we have this big high-low assembly going on here. They wanted a, a dual one so they could put a bike rack and other stuff in here. And so that really spaced things apart a lot. So uh, that's why we have adapters. So if that's something you run into uh, where they fall a little bit short, this is a way you can solve that issue. Uh, this particular tow bar, it does have this uh, rod right here. And that's there so you can take your uh, electrical cable, kind of put it through there, and that keeps it up off the ground and out of harm's way. 
So if you need uh, a tow bar wiring uh, and you plan on picking some up, get the kind that's coiled like this, that way you can actually utilize this properly. If you end up getting a different tow bar that has the channels in it, you're gonna want the straight type, um, uh, straight type cable. So I uh, just figured I'd mention that. Something that does kind of separate uh, this tow bar from some of the others, which is pretty nice. There's actually a built-in uh, dropper rise here in the shank. So they come in the drop position, which is by far the most common. And um, it sets it down a little ways. And the reason being is you want your tow bar to be level with your vehicle whenever you're, whenever you're flat towing it. So uh, in our case, we've got a really big motor home. Um, so we still needed to use an additional drop, but you know, the having this little bit to work with already, um, you know, eliminates the need for even a bigger drop. And that, you know, the bigger the drop, you put more stress on components and stuff. So it's kind of nice that there's a, a small one already built in. This could potentially, if your motor home is smaller, could potentially um, save you or prevent you from having to get a high low adapter. And, you know, if you're wondering what that is, it's this piece here. This one's kind of special. It has this other top piece on there for a bike rack or whatever, but you can get them with just normal setups like this. And it's super easy to figure out if you need one or not. Um, and it's, it's something that's pretty important because if the tow bar is level the way it should, you're gonna get better performance out of it. It's the right way to do things. And so to figure that out, all you're gonna do is measure, pull your setup up close like this on flat ground, measure from the motorhome's hitch pin hole down to the ground, and then measure from your vehicle's uh, base plate pen hole down to the ground. And you want that distance to be within three inches of each other. Um, you know, the closer the better. So let's just say, for example, if uh, the motorhome was five inches taller than our vehicle, a four inch drop would be the appropriate one because then it would set them within only one inch and the tow bar would be level. Something pretty neat uh, about this tow bar is you can actually keep it stored on the back of your motor home. So once you have it uh, all disconnected, what you can do, well, if I can manage to get the pin in here, what you can do is fold these like that and they drop right into place. I do like this. I feel like this one does have an advantage as far as uh, storing goes over some of the other ones because having independent arms, it makes it really easy to swing these in and lock them down. Some of the other ones, uh, you know, you have to lift it completely up as a unit, get them in a small notch and tilt them. So a little more user friendly here, but uh, something I do recommend, probably not a bad idea if you are gonna be storing this on your motor home, uh, would be to pick up a locking hitch pin. That way it'll be secured to the hitch and no one will be able to just pull the pin and clip out and take off with your new tow bar. There is one thing that I do want to mention and in order to get the tow bar to actually pair up with your base plate, you are going to have to grab the pins, which are these here. So those uh, are separate. You can get them here at each trailer. Um, so not really a huge deal. It, it would be kind of cool if they came with it, but you know, it kind of is what it is. Um, so there's a standard style pens, and then you can even opt for an upgrade, which are these. They have this big handle on it and makes it, I mean, super easy to see and grab. So a couple of options there, and you can get, you know, whichever ones you like the most. Uh, but other than that, you know, at the end of the day, it's a nice tow bar. It's heavy duty, uh, has all the kind of must have features, in my opinion. And then you get a couple of extras, you know, like the drop and rise built in and, and everything else like that. So uh, one you really can't uh, go wrong with. And that'll finish up our look at of the eTrailer.com XHD tow bar on our 2022 Nexus Wraith motorhome.